So fecal examination, obviously, certainly if there's loose stool, important to see do we have parasites in our most common rabbit issue, coccidia. Even though it's not that prevalent in older rabbits, it's mostly a serious young rabbit disease, we certainly do see it in older, especially debilitated rabbits. The other diagnostics, so like advanced diagnostics, abdominal, ultrasound, things like that, they're important, but they're something that usually come later unless we suspect there's like a severe obstruction or something like that or a severe heart issue. Um, thymoma, lymphomas are one of those things that we can stick the probe on them pretty quickly and see is there a large mass in the chest. So, um, so that's mostly it. So common medications that we're going to send home and use. So there's several categories. So GI motility drugs. So sorry, these are medications that regulate the GI tract and help keep it moving. So Reglan, metoclopramide, is an upper GI motility regulator. So it gets kind of the stomach and small intestines moving. And then metronidazole has multiple functions, but it also works as a lower GI tract stimulant. So it gets the colon and cecum and things like that moving. The great thing about metronidazole is that it also is an anti-flagellate medication. So if there's giardia or anything like that involved, and it is also an anaerobic <laughs> antibacterial. So um, lactulose, so lactulose is basically exactly what it sounds like. It is a laxative for the most part. It has some other functions. It actually supports the liver and things as well. But the main purpose is to draw water into the colon and get those poops moving again. So, and then cisapride is essentially the same as Reglan, kind of. It just works through a slightly different mechanism. So, if you have a rabbit that Reglan's not really working for, cisapride may work better. And different veterinarians have different drugs that they use. So, I prefer Reglan almost all the time, unless it's not working very well. Dr. Camfer uses cisapride a lot. She also uses Reglan, but Sometimes we'll see pets come in from other veterinarians and they've been on cisapride and that's totally fine. One's really not usually better than the other one. Um, pain medications. So there's two main categories of pain medications. Um, and that's true in people as well as animals. So you have your opioid pain medication. So those are your opiates, obviously. All morphine derivatives. The only difference is how much stronger they are than morphine or less strong than morphine. So butorphanol, tramadol, buprenorphine, and hydromorphone, oxymorphone. Hydromorphone is currently on back order. So we switched to oxymorphone, which is now also on back order. So we're trying to get regular just plain morphine. <laughs> so um, torb and buprenorphine most of the time is going to get the job done. It, except in guinea pigs, because they're like the big babies of the rodent world. And they're like, oh, I stubbed my toe, like I'm going to die. So they need to be, it's true. They break a nail and they literally just lay on their side and they're like, oh, I've given up. So they're like the little lemmings of the rodent world. They just throw themselves off a cliff. So they need hydro or something really strong. Um, for most rabbits, unless there's something really like, liver lobe torsion or severe impaction or something like that, usually buprenorphine or TORB are going to do the trick. I prefer butorphanol over buprenorphine. I think it works better. Buprenorphine lasts longer. Um, so tramadol is a synthetic opioid derivative, so it is not a true opioid medication, but it acts like an opioid medication. Um, have Pretty good success if anybody feels like it doesn't work, certainly let me know. But usually I feel like it works pretty well in rabbits. It does not really work in cats. And from what I've heard, it doesn't really work that well in people. So, um, but in rabbits, it seems to work pretty well. In dogs, it works well. The NSAIDs. So the non anti-inflammatory drugs. There's a million NSAIDs. So aspirin, you know, Tylenol. In our world, Medicam, Remedil, Duramax, Paroxicam, all those kind of drugs. In veterinary medicine, especially in exotic medicine, Medicam is going to be the most common, so Meloxicam. It's a very, very, very safe and effective medication. However, like I mentioned before, 
if there's dehydration, if it's an elderly rabbit or has any evidence of kidney or liver disease, then we are not going to use Medicam. So, because it can potentially put them into renal failure. Too much Medicam can also rot out the GI tract and cause ulceration, just so like if you were to take 20 aspirin, you would have to go to the hospital. So, um, same kind of thing. So, other medications, so some other common medications, antibiotics, plus or minus, depending on what is actually going on. Hairball paste, so the laxatone. So I think laxatone is a great product. Um, I always tell people, just make sure that you get the maple flavored and not the fish or chicken flavor, because it's actually cat hairball paste. Works really well in rabbits, same thing, so you know. The goal with the laxatone is to bind the fur as they're grooming themselves and it's in their stomach so it passes easier into the GI tract and passes out without hopefully causing an obstruction. Um, so, cymethicone. So, cymethicone is gas -X. Um, I tell people get infant gas -X or baby gas -X. The adult size is too strong for our little small patients usually not that big of a deal. You're not really going to overdose them with gas -X, but better to use the infant. gas -X only works when there's gas in the stomach and a little tiny bit when it's in the small intestine. It does not work once it's passed into the intestines and to the colon and cecum. So, um, and again, that's one of those medications that's plus or minus, you know, your rabbit may or may not respond to it. It does nothing for me. So, um, Sub-Q fluids, so fluids are not generally thought about as a medication per se, but certainly they're a really important part of our treatment protocol usually, because usually regardless of what's happened, the rabbits are stressed, they're not eating, they're not drinking, so we need to get their hydration boosted up, and sometimes that's why I said if we catch it really early, we can look at the GI tract and just say, oh, everything looks a little doughy, it's a little dehydrated, give them a good few doses of sub-Q fluids, gets absorbed into the GI tract, that little tiny obstruction, the intestines open up and it just moves out and good to go with a little pain meds and hopefully no surgery. Um, so sub-Q fluids, very safe also. Rarely are you gonna cause an issue with sub-Q fluids. Even if you give a large dose, unless the rabbit has heart disease, then you have to be really, really cautious with the dose that you're gonna give because you can actually drown them. So 